Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for watching. This video is actually a very exciting one for me. Proxmox just released version 8.3 of their hypervisor software. There are a lot of changes in this version, but one in particular might interest us more than others. And I'm talking about the ability to finally import OVA files. This means if you want, just as an example, to install Home Assistant on your hypervisor, you no longer need to do CLI commands. You no longer need to manually create virtual machines or manually attach hard drives. You don't need to rely on community created scripts, nothing. These are all things of the past, they will continue to work, but this task just became much easier in version 8.3. Instead of continuing to talk about it, let me show you. All right, guys, so you have to see how easy Proxmox have just made it. But again, it started with Proxmox version 8.3. It just rolled out a few days ago. So if you're just watching it, make sure you're already upgraded. If you're watching it in the future, I'm sure you're already on 8.3 or later. These are the new features in 8.3. And I'm talking about this new feature right here more streamlined guest import of OVA and OVA files. Uh, again, this has been long overdue, but check out how easy it made the whole process. So if you want to install Home Assistant on your Proxmox server before, you had to download the QCOW file and then import it and then decompress it and then manually create the virtual machine. Check out how easy the process is, is now. So the first thing you will need to go is to go into Home Assistant download section into the alternative section and you don't even need to download just copy the url copy the link and go into your proxmox server by the way this will be the only thing you will need to do outside the proxmox web interface so now you're in my proxmox in in interface and now you'll need to choose the storage you would want to import and download the ova the ova file to I chosen my Synology NFS shared drive just because it appears on both of my uh, hosts. So select your storage, click on edit. In Proxmox, you will need to tell uh, uh, each storage what is it used for. I don't know why, that's just the way it is. And you will have the option now to select import. Make sure it's selected. Click OK. And now let's go to our storage. Let's go to the new import section right here and we'll select download from URL and paste in the, UR the URL we just copied. Query URL. It found uh, the HAOS. By the way, I will put a link to this specific link in the description of this video, but just be aware that as time goes by, this link will be less and less updated. It will be outdated pretty soon but I will put a link to the, in, to the OVA file. Click on download, and this will take just a minute or two. All right, so the download process is complete. And uh, again, you don't need CLI, you don't need to leave the web interface at all. We got the OVA file, now we need to click on import. At this point, it will be very familiar interface for you. It's just like it's the same interface as creating a new virtual machine. Almost nothing has changed. Select your VMID, cores, sockets, memory, CPU type, OS type. I will change it to Linux. Select your network. Again, this is all very familiar. It's almost the exact same interface as creating a, a, vir a virtual machine from scratch. Let's go to the advanced tab. And by the way, if you want to place the virtual machine in a different storage or a specific storage you want for your needs, you can of course select the storage right here and select on which storage the virtual machine will be created. What I would do is I would change the SCSI controller to Virtio Single and the network interface to Virtio because I know that the Home Assistant OS or the full virtual machine operating system will support these drivers. And let's click on import. 
Alright, the task is complete. It took less than a minute. Now, we got a virtual machine up and running. It's not, uh, it's not powered on yet, but it's ready to be powered on. The only thing you should remember to do before powering on the virtual machine, just go to options and Kimu guest agent, the default is disabled. If, if that's the case for you, just click on edit and use Kimu agent. Click on OK. Right click on the, on the virtual machine, start it. And guys, that's it. That's all it took to take, to get from zero to a full home assistant virtual machine up and running. And in a minute or two, I will go into the console and you will see it's up and running and I will show you it's even identified the Kimu agent is identified everything is just ready to go all right guys so you can see in the summary tab that we got an IP address that means that the Kimu agent is already communicating from the guest to the host which is great in the console home assistant is now booted up Everything is ready to go. By the way, if you want, you can now migrate it to a new host, change its uh, storage, everything you want, just like a regular virtual machine. So guys, that was the entire process, start to finish, no command line, no community created scripts, nothing, just a simple download, import, next, next, finish. If you like this video, please give it a like. And of course, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.